earth with its lush vegetation, enchanting rivers, blue seas and high mountains has captured the imagination of poets and writers. However, the electrical and magnetic properties of earth have not received the deserving attention as its physical beauty, which however is hard to ignore for an electrical engineer at least. Earth is in fact an excellent conductor, which is not a very intuitive fact for many of us, as we don't tend to view earth exactly like a metal. But the truth is, earth has lot of minerals which are good conductors of electricity. And most importantly, it is huge in volume and is thus a near infinite reservoir of electrons. Indeed, sand is not quite a good conductor as a metal. If you take say, one meter cube of earth and measure its resistance, it will have appreciable resistance. But if you measure the resistance between two points in the earth by driving in two metal rods, you can see the two metal rods here. These metal rods are called earth electrodes. Then we will get a very small resistance between them, which means earth is a good conductor. The reason is earth has an enormous volume. So we can consider earth as a conductor with a very high cross section. And we know from the formula for resistance that the resistance of a conductor uh, decreases greatly with the increase in cross section. In, a, in another perspective, we can also consider there are may infinite number of uh, parallel paths uh, between the two electrodes. And uh, from the electrical theory, we know as the number of parallel paths increases, the resistance of the uh, the total resistance will be will become very very small that is happening here so this explains why earth offers low resistance to current and acts as a good conductor one thing is that we have to make sure that we get a good contact with the general mass of the earth through good grounding techniques to mi to minimize the contact resistance between the earth electrode and the earth. For example, you can see here, <laughs> this is the general mass of earth and this is the soil where we are uh, grounding the earth electrode. But you can see that uh, we don't get a good earth here because in this area, uh, for example, uh, it will be like this in desert areas. Uh, we have a dry sand or rock which are uh, actually somewhat uh, like an insulator which prevents from the uh, which pre prevents the uh, electro uh, er er the electrode from getting a good contact with the general mass of earth so in this uh, case this is not a good ground so it will not conduct much current to the earth so we have to make sure that the uh, the the earth electrode is driven deep enough and uh, there should be a good contact with the earth and uh, it is for this reason uh, that we for example you can see here uh, this is a uh, earth electrode you can see that uh, we have to minimize, uh, we try to minimize contact resistance by driving the earth road deep into the earth and we add salt, charcoal, moisture etc around this so as to get a good contact with the earth and minimize the contact resistance. Besides its ability to contact, earth is also noted for its constant neutral potential called zero potential. Neutral potential means there is no excess or deficient charge at that place. That means all any at any place on the earth you will have the same neutral uh, charge. That is because it is not possible to charge up the earth's body because it is too huge and it has too many electrons. So suppose uh, you uh, there is a charging of the earth for example on a practical example is due to a lightning strike you can see that there is a, a cloud a positively charged cloud here which uh, 
uh, charges the earth by positive charge but you can see that uh, as soon as it hits the earth the charges are dispersed and absorbed by the earth leading to a, a neutral charge very soon so it is not possible to charge up the earth surface so that means at any two point of the earth will be uh, at the same uh, potential uh, which also will be which also is the neutral potential the property of earth as a conductor and neutral point throws up some fascinating aspects and applications which are in fact criti critical to our uh, electrical supply systems we will see three of them in this video first thing is earth acts as a reference point for measurement consider the power supply shown in the figure to find the voltage at any point for example the point a we have to fix a reference point and we can measure the voltage at the point a with respect to this reference point now it is possible we can fix the reference point uh, uh, as a point on the circuit itself for example we can uh, fix uh, one of the terminals of the power supply as a reference point strictly speaking to measure the voltage at uh, point a uh, the exact voltage at point A, you have to measure it against this reference point. And uh, actually, for example, you cannot uh, simply measure it uh, uh, the um, uh, the potential at A against this uh, you know, this uh, return conductor at this point because actually e even this return conductor has a resistance drop which should be added. Uh, to get the actual uh, voltage at this point with respect to the reference point but uh, you, as you can imagine it's very difficult to do that because this reference point is not uh, uh, always accessible especially at uh, far away places so what we can do is only we can just uh, measure the uh, voltage with respect to this point and uh, be content with that we cannot uh, uh, easily measure the exact voltage at this point with respect to this reference point. But if we connect the reference point to earth, we can measure the voltage at any point by measuring the voltage at that point with respect to the earth. For example, you see here the same circuit before here. What I have done is I have earthed at this point. You can see that I have earthed this point to the earth. That means this point will be uh, at the uh, neutral, uh, uh, the potential of the earth. And uh, in that case, I can measure the voltage at this point by using a voltmeter, which is uh, earthed at the other end. So you can we know that the uh, earth has a uh, the same potential at uh, all places so it has the same potential uh, which is a neutral potential uh, uh, so it is the same neutral potential here and also here that means uh, whatever voltage we can me we measure with respect to the earth here it is the same voltage the, that is uh, present with respect to the uh, reference we have chosen so it is possible to uh, use the conducting nature or the neutral uh, uh, reference point of earth uh, to as a measurement reference point second aspect is the earth can act as a return conductor for example see here this uh, uh, circuit what i have done is actually i have earthed the two the load end also before i had in the earth there so in this case i have earth the load end so what will happen the line current will flow through this line and what about the neutral or the return current you can see that much of it will be shared between the neutral and the earth so you can see that earth here 
the conducting nature of the earth is uh, apparent here. Uh, you can see that it is uh, uh, acting as a return conductor for the line current. Uh, in an ideal case, where uh, we have get a, we get a, get a very good uh, ground, the uh, neutral current will be zero. But uh, normally that is not the case. That we will be discussing in a future video. So, but even in this case, uh, much of the current will be shared by the earth and uh, not uh, not through the neutral. So we can even make the neutral uh, conductor smaller in size because it will not be carrying much of the current as much as the line uh, conductor. So this helps us uh, in saving a, a little bit of cost. So the role of earth as a uh, giant conductor is apparent here. Next aspect is the earth acts as an electrical safety bypass for electric shock. You can see here what I have done is to the previous pic uh, picture uh, circuit I have added a earth wire to the electrical equipment. So here what happens suppose there is a phase to body short. If this earth wire was not present what would happen naturally as this guy is standing on the is in contact with the earth the current will pass through this phase through the fault point from the body and uh, uh, the body of the equipment it will pass to the body of the person and through the earth it will complete its path to the return terminal so in this process the guy will feel a shock which can be dangerous to him so to avoid that what I have done is I have bypassed uh, or I have connected a earth wire that is bonded securely to the metal part of this equipment and uh, I have earthed that to the uh, earth terminal here. So what happens is even if there is a phase to body short the current will pass uh, through the earth wire and complete its path bypassing the guy it will complete its path uh, and return to the source and in this process if the current is large enough it will also isolate the this uh, area by blowing the fuse which is an extra protective measure which will uh, alert us to the presence of a fault here and help us in uh, the rectifying the fault as soon as possible so here also we utilize the omnipresent conductor nature of earth as a safety tool. So in this video we have seen about the global conductor nature of earth and the three facets or applications of this very important fact. There are many more interesting aspects which we shall examine in a future video. In the meantime you are free to air your comments for this video. Thank you very much.